COVID has upended everything in our lives, but healthcare, without a doubt, has been the hardest challenge, particularly for those diagnosed with life threatening diseases. Since 2016, Pfizer Canada has partnered with Rethink Breast Cancer, the Quebec Breast Cancer Foundation, and the Canadian Breast Cancer Network for the It's About NBC Time campaign to shed light on metastatic breast cancer and share the stories of those living with it. During this pandemic, amplifying these stories is more important than ever. My next guest, Frankie Holness, was first diagnosed with breast cancer in January 2021 and learned that it was metastatic breast cancer shortly thereafter. COVID-19 has played a role in her entire journey with NBC, and she joins me now to discuss. Welcome to the show, Frankie. Thank you for having me, Candice. I just want to start the interview by thanking you for being here. I always have such tremendous respect for women like yourself putting these awful circumstances who are still willing to share their story. So thank you for joining me. It's so important. Uh, Could you start by telling me when you first started to suspect you that something was wrong? I discovered uh, a lump in my right breast in last October. So this year has been, this October has been one year exactly where I discovered a mass in my right breast. It was strange because it wasn't something I felt lying down. It was only when I was sitting up and if I kind of brushed my arm in a downward motion, I felt the the thickening on my right breast. Anyways, uh, my doctor who was in another city at the time because I was living in Niagara at the time, he provided me with a requisition and told me to send it off to an area to a mammogram specialists where I was to get a mammogram and an ultrasound that was not done until January 12th is when they booked it and I know that was due to COVID Um, and then a couple days later they told me to come back in and I had a biopsy um, and I knew something was off because the biopsy they pulled um, samples from not only my breasts but also underneath my armpit. So I knew that something was off because they told me initially that they were only doing it from my breast. So that was in January of 2021. How long was it before treatment started? What were sort of the delays that COVID caused? Well, just initially to find your mass in October and then to to go for a mammogram and ultrasound until January 12th, that was a significant time change. Like I thought that was huge. And then even after that, they called me, my doctor called me the end of January, January 29th, I believe, and told me that they discovered it was invasive ductal carcinoma and that I would then meet with a surgeon. I met with the surgeon and she said they would have to to meet with a team and to go over and assess my, my particular case. I didn't end up having any treatment or starting my treatment until the end of March. And I had my surgery April 4th. So she started me March 26th onto hormone blocker, but I would, she, she assured me that we are now starting this. Um, you're still going to be going through treatment. And then I would have my surgery, the actual cancer removed, not until April 4th. I question myself a lot that whole time period, because that's almost, that's more than six months from when I initially found it to how much that played a part in my cancer spreading because that was a huge difference in time there from when I found it to when I actually had the cancer removed from my breast. The delays must be so frustrating when you're dealing with something so important. And so now that you've started the treatment, is this still affecting things, the delays and the, you know, the, the system being under so much strain? Well, COVID definitely plays a part in all, like everything that you are meeting with, like even now I recently met to get my, my ovaries and my tubes removed. That's the next step in slowing down, um, the production of estrogen. So my next step into slowing the growth of my cancer is I'm going to have my, my ovaries and tubes removed. I was told by the surgeon a month and a half ago that due to COVID, they're only getting two week blocks of like appointments to actually book the surgeon rooms. So it might be another two to three months before I even get that surgery. And this is due to COVID because they've allocated everything to just, everything has been allocated for COVID as being the urgent, urgent one. However, 
you know, in this particular case, this is affecting the growth of the cancer that's spreading throughout my body, possibly. You've been going through this journey now then since last October, incredibly frustrating delays. Where are you turning for support, inspiration, information? Uh, have you turned to groups, individuals? I outsource groups such as Rethink for Breast Cancer, um, the Canadian Breast Cancer Association. I, I looked for these groups online um, to find. I've signed up for as many support groups as possible that I can just to speak with others in regards to their journey. Um, NBC Time, this campaign was a, was a great part for me to, to go out there again and spread awareness for it because a lot of people are not aware of just the whole process, they have a certain ideal in their head that breast cancer um, is maybe the good type of, I've heard that say, oh, that's the good type of cancer you have, the good type of cancer, like breast cancer. If that was the case, and now I'm metastatic and it's terminal, I don't necessarily say that that's the good type of cancer to have. <laughs> so, Yeah. And so actually, this, you bring up an interesting sort of I, um, thought here, prior to being diagnosed with cancer, you know, and now you have been diagnosed, what were, what were some of the misconceptions about having this that you were maybe carrying around or that you hear other people uh, now share that you want to sort of lay to rest and say that's not true? Uh, one of the things that I've heard many times is, oh, you're too young to have breast cancer. You know, breast cancer doesn't affect you. Um, you have to be eating a certain way or certain um living a certain lifestyle or you're a smoker or you're, you know, you're drinking a lot of alcohol. These are all things that play a role in you having cancer. I was told right from the get go, oh, you know, this is all your diet, just change your diet. And um, I was sent a thousand different documentaries on changing what I consume, what I eat. Um, but when you look out there, that's not the case. Cancer doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter how great shape you are in. It doesn't matter what type of food you consume, vegetarian, whether you're eating a lot of greens, cancer is affecting more and more young people. And that's another thing they're telling you to get mammograms when you're in your forties. However, when you're looking online, you're seeing women as young as in their like early twenties who are being diagnosed with cancer. And that is, that is simply frightening because they need to do more. They really do need to do more. We actually, we, I just did an interview uh, with uh, Dr. Paula Gordon a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about, uh, you know, that uh, across the country, the, the inconsistency with screening times and, you know, that breast screening mammograms don't always catch it, especially for women who may have what they consider dense breasts. So there is a lot to women should know in educating themselves about this. Um, did you have a family history at all? That was something that I discovered after. Um, I discovered after, because when I met with the surgeon, that was the first thing they asked is, okay, well, what is your family history with cancer? Um, and now I've had, I've encouraged my daughter who's 24 to now go and navigate and to go to her doctor and say, Hey, I'm 24. And this is the history that we have. She should be getting screened now. And again, she's faced with doctors who are saying, Hey, no, you're too young for that. But Hey, it's in our family history. I discovered it through my own diagnosis, but it wasn't discussed, you know, so now that we're aware of it, we're finding it more and more um, in distant relatives as well, that it is something that played a part, I think, in my own diagnosis. And I would like to, I'm curious about genetic testing as well to see if that played a role in my, in my cancer. So what would you say then for, for women who are now, um, you know, maybe facing this, this right now, what would, what advice would you give them in sort of the early days? I would tell them to seek out as much information as they can. Um, look into organizations. There are a lot of great organizations that provide support. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. And I think for myself, like one thing I wish I had done a little bit more was instead of just waiting when my doctor said, oh, the surgeon's going to call you. I wish I had been more um, adamant about it and been a little bit more aggressive in trying to getting those answers 
questioning why my surgery was so, how many months from the initial find, um, being a little bit more aggressive. But if you can find a great support group and, and find yourself a mentor, there's someone, there's someone out there who can answer those questions for you. However, keep in mind that when you are looking for mentors that understand that just because you may know somebody or someone might have gone through cancer, their cancer could be very different from your cancer because cancers, there's so much different factors. As you mentioned, dense breasts, there's estrogen progesterone, which is what my cancer is. There's triple negative. There's so many different cancers. And so there are so many different factors on how it's treated. And a lot of people want to offer advice on that. Well, my cousin had it or my sister had it. Well, all of that is fine. Yes. But keep in mind that the type of cancer that someone may have, their age plays a factor as well, whether they're pre post uh, menopause um, or pre-menopause, all that plays a fact in how their treatment is, is, is dealt with. Okay. Frankie, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, the website is mbctime.ca. Is that correct? It is. That is all right. correct. Thank, thank you. I look forward to having you back on the show again. Thank you, Candice, for having me. Take care.